Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call on our new time schedule, as I announced yesterday. 3.15 p.m. start for the meditation, which is exactly where I'm at right now. Uh, a lot of people probably didn't hear it or something. But uh, welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Monday, January 30th, 2023, 3.15 p.m. Eastern. Love appears in millions of forms. Be a light unto yourself. Hold fast to the truth. Look not for refuge to anyone besides what is inside yourself. Be a light unto yourself. Hold fast to the truth. Look not for refuge to anyone beside, besides what is inside yourself. Buddha, which means enlightened one. All around us is an endless ocean of love. We may not always see it or feel it, but it is there. Our senses have merely been blinded by the inherited judgments and limited beliefs from others in our past. Once those beliefs are cleared, we will see and feel this divine, omnipresent energy is truly everywhere. This universe is the physical container of the divine. Divinity is everywhere within everyone and everything. We cannot even say that there is a particular location that this divine all-loving source stems from or is more densely found because the infinite universe is the source itself. This means that divinity is guiding every little thought and thing. It's only when we stop, look, and listen and clear with, with, cl will, with clear, pure eyes open to this truth that we can know what the purest love is, the guiding force behind everything. It's quite easy for the mind to separate this world into right and wrong. We all believe the world is made up of good and bad people. Challenging and easy situations, bright and dark aspects, and situations that are obviously right or wrong. This level of perception takes no skill at all, for it is just the common judgmental ego mind running the show following the crowd. This universe is saying, allow me to flow through you unrestricted and you will see the greatest magic you have ever seen. This dualistic path is a necessary stage on the spiritual awakening path. Yet understand that it does not include nor incorporate the acceptance that who we really are is an infinite spiritual being that exists beyond this dualistic world. The black and white level of perception is like the kindergarten of awareness where the ego mind is molded to the world's beliefs like superglue. It is entranced by the ego's seduction that life needs to be defined, clear-cut, and under complete control. What, re what requires true mastery in this life is to go beyond duality. We need to open our minds to see the great divine play 
is behind it all. By opening up our minds to perceive the synchronistic cosmic performance behind all events, actions, and people, we no longer live in duality and have jumped to a higher level of education. This new school of higher perception requires us to be perpetually open-minded, so much that we essentially drop all of the mind's morals, judgments, and right and wrong opinions. In the highest spiritual school, we must choose to be constantly curious about how everything, everything, is only an expression of love. All other viewpoints are simply an exquisite creativity of seemingly separated ego. Remember that wherever your heart is, there you will find your treasure. Paolo Coelho, the alchemist. The mind is, I've said this several times, the mind is too small of a container to hold the highest truth. If it does try, it must first let go of everything it knows because it lives in duality. When your eyes have been cleared from the swinging judgments between right and wrong, you'll know in your heart that every single action done on this earth is a form of love in a disguise. And your mind's not going not to take that, is it? Nope. It's too small of a container to understand any of that. So you might be thinking, as many do, how can anger, rape, despair, hopelessness, or even violence the forms of love. Love is so divine, deeply creative, and omnipresent that it can appear in millions of forms. It has the capacity to morph itself into any perception we place on it. The more relaxed, open, and receptive we are, the easier it is to see it is everywhere. The more pressure a person feels inside, the more profound the disguise will appear on the outside. Love under great pressure will come out in an emotionally contracted state such as hate, judgment, blame, shame, and yes, even fear. The mind can only see these states as the opposite of love simply because the mind only exists in the world of duality. If and when we wish to evolve as human beings, we must choose to take on a much more enlightened mind and heart-based perspective. This contains the understanding that all harmful behavior is how contracted love spills out from inside our emotional pressure cooker. Mind, noun, a beautiful servant, a dangerous master. Oh, so. Mind, noun, a beautiful servant, a dangerous master. Love can seem so hidden uh, that we cannot imagine or believe it is a form of love. If we see deceit, abuse, or betrayal in a relationship, everyone would immediately agree that this is not an act of love. The judges, the lawyers, the judicial courts will punish this behavior and say it was a, a void of love. For example, a wife who loves her husband may become physically violent with him 
for something he did or did not do. Normally, she may not react to his behavior, yet if she is holding tightly onto a state of emotional disconnection, sexual tension, or even intense financial pressure on her, she may only be able to communicate her love through this tightly abusive state. It's quite easy to recognize how love shows up as a couple and a long, warm, deep embrace and a tender kiss on the cheek. Yet, to see love is behind the words and actions of a victimized spouse or even an act of violence on the street takes a real master. We will, need a, we will need a very creative imagination, super expanded heart, and the courage to peer through the eyes of wrongness and see our infinite soul. It is only through a heavenly perspective on this life can we liberate ourselves from the dualistic prison of perpetual judgment and know that love is somewhere in there, showing itself in the greatest of disguises. Many of us have been taught, remember other people's thoughts? We've been taught to believe that fear is a lack of love. This is true in the dualistic world, yet if you look deeper, there is a deeply eternal loving force behind them both, driving and creating both fear and love. This is the God source of love, which is so vast, illuminated, always loving, wise, and compassionate. This source not only allows fear, anger, and judgment to be expressed, but forgives it instantly. When fear and love are perceived as opposites, we tend to forget that they are complementary energies that depend on each other to coexist. Now, this is a real interesting statement. And it's, it's been kind of Changed a little bit with the times. Buddha, right? Chill, homie. You need to let that shit go. Many of us need to let that shit go. The bad stuff, right? The stuff that we have dragged through our several lifetimes that weighs us down, that makes us feel heavy, frightful, distressed. And most of the time, we don't even know it because we haven't discovered what it is. When we can let go of the mind, release control over our reality, and accept that the greatest love is always hidden behind it all, we become instantly free. We can let go of our daily struggle to change ourselves and others and spend our energy surrendering to a deeper place of peace inside. Everyone, every one of us has their karma to work out and our job is not to judge how that looks. Okay? Everyone has their karma to work out and our job is not to judge how that looks. Judgment always lowers our consciousness. Well, acceptance always raises it. We're talking always about raising our vibrational frequencies. When we practice accepting that love is behind it all, we will find a profound resting place inside our hearts that is free from the critical mind. We'll discover how we can be perpetually free from any experience of judgment, fear, or separation. This all-encompassing, all-allowing, 
great love container that permits the wildest and most insane behaviors that people have is what the highest, most enlightened love is all about. Now, if you and when you wish to find this greatest love today, we won't be disappointed. We won't be disappointed. I found that my life becomes a constant and enlightening joy ride whenever I embrace and live within this understanding. Whenever I realize that love is behind it all, allowing for all and playfully expressing itself in the most random variety of expressions, I can truly relax and find great peace inside. Isn't that what we're looking for, searching, lifetime after lifetime? When ego is lost, limit is lost, we become infinite, kind, and beautiful. When ego is lost, limit is lost, we become infinite, kind, and beautiful. Yogi Bhajan. By simply bringing awareness to how the greatest love is going to show up and the most unusual disguises to test our level of consciousness just so we can see where our eyes were still clouded by illusions from the past, we find that this, is the universe's special way of loving you just so that you awaken from them, from the dream. We probably will experience some resistance to embracing this all-loving perspective as it will feel like we're permanently moving to a foreign country. Just remember that this deeply eternal loving approach to this life is in no way going to serve as a means to justify the cause of harmful, harmful actions upon others. Just remember that this deeply eternal loving approach to this life is in no way going to serve as means to justify the cause of harmful actions upon others. It will only open our hearts quiet our minds, and help us transcend the world of judgment and duality. This enlightening approach can only increase our consciousness. If we truly embody it, we're not going to create more excuses for being irresponsible with our life right, with, your, with our lives, or the thoughts that enter our minds. We will drop deeper inside where love always is and have gentle, allowing thoughts towards ourselves and others. When we practice this understanding that all thoughts and actions in this life stem from the greater source of love, we will no longer ever feel a lack of separation or love. When the fish in the ocean truly surrenders, it never feels separate again. When the fish in the ocean truly surrenders, it never feels separate again. Be totally vulnerable. Realize that you cannot be harmed. Benton Ho Masaro. Be totally vulnerable and realize that you cannot be harmed. We were all here to move our full cycle in this journey. It's kind of like we were all put into this 
deception. It was it, it kind of a deception where we didn't know, nor did we have any clue, period, about it. Now you would think that I've had some people say, well then why aren't why isn't the whole planet in on this? There are some civilizations that are all on the same page. Give or take a little bit here and there. There are other civilizations that are totally on the wrong. There's, they're not on, none of them are on the same page. Then there is Earth in this civilization. Some of us are on the same page. But the minority, and that's all we need anyway. The ego mind wants you to believe that you have to have everybody on this planet totally awake and totally functioning and all on the same page. Then it would be absolutely trillions of years before this civilization had a clue. We all happen to be on, like a group of us happen to be on a, like a same page, you know, that, that we're, we're aware of a lot more things than the, the majority. On the enlightened path of embracing that love is everywhere, we will notice we stop being so defensive and reactive and start becoming defenseless and responsible for the tremendous creative, all-loving power inside of us. Those monsters or moments when we normally would have felt personally attacked by some random comment will all simply disappear. By knowing love is behind all action, we must choose to step into our own most empowered selves and start living an outrageously amazing life. We ascend into higher states of joy and appreciation, which can only manifest the highest possible outcomes. Surrendering to love is the highest path a human being can take. When our bodies and minds fully accept that love is everywhere, we will suddenly feel more relaxed. We will become deeply aware of the thoughts and actions our choosing in each moment and see that your soul is only capable of coming from the infinite source of love. No matter what the mind believes, this can be confusing to the mind, for the mind only knows duality. Yet, if and when you are conscious enough to embrace this all-inclusive, non-dual understanding, we can also become vulnerable enough to feel what it's like to have an infinite source of love beating within our heart all day long. This shift can be terrifying for the mind as it will need to break its habit of being in control and right about everything. Yet to embrace love and enlightenment is a much better deal in the long run. This is what it takes to graduate from this life and evolve to the highest level. Giving love is the really beautiful experience because then we are an emperor. Getting love is, very, is a very small experience and it is the experience of a beggar. Don't be a beggar, at least as far as love is concerned. Be an emperor because it is an inexhaustible quality in us all. Okay.
Now, to get a jump start on this higher love path, I invite you to think about a certain situation where you would bet your life on the fact that love was not present there. When you see it, look inside yourself to where you're holding on to judgment, separation from the greater love, and limiting beliefs inside. Find where in your body you feel this pain and sit with it, breathing deeply into it, or as long as it takes until it changes. If and when you want to access all of your divine manifesting powers in this life, you must choose to change your perception of everything you see as less than scared. If you cannot see God in all, you cannot see God at all. The moment we can allow any situation to be neither right nor wrong, and drop our judgments about ourselves and the, ob- and the other persons, we will start to see the bigger picture and the karmic play behind it all. Challenging relationships, emotional traumas, and negative thoughts, and conversations always have a higher soul purpose. By knowing that love is behind the scenes, playing out these different events and roles in our lives, we can find peace within and accept the deeper lesson our souls are wanting to learn. We will find tremendous inner peace in keeping this truth sacred everywhere we go. Apply the understanding that love is always there inside everything and everyone. It is moving our breath, beating our hearts, listening beneath our minds, running our entire show. So it's a It's a process. It could be, how would you say, it could be where the ego mind pulls us outside of ourselves and distracts us and deters us from our missions, which is finally to discover who and what we are. This is why people ask, well, why does it take so many lifetimes? to get to that point. Because they're too distracted from the external world. You know, the mind, ego, wanting, having, getting, having more and more and more and having, getting, wanting, having more and more and more. That's the ego mind. In every single body we enter, it's there. It, 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 it eventually shows up. I see it's our choice. It's your choice. It anybody else's. It's what you decide for you. Now, some people will continue lifetime after lifetime living in the material physical world. As the ego mind is their master. This is what you see a lot lot of on this planet where the majority feel that they have to win, right? They have to succeed. This is all ego mind enforced, supported, and boosted. So the frustration comes in because we believe We've been taught to believe by other people's thoughts that we are out there. 
not in here. And even after we leave the body, if we haven't learned who and what we are in the body, we're going to be wandering around till the next life comes along and, and the God and not even know that we're the God. Imagine what would happen that all of us in this country became aware that we all knew we were that we weren't these bodies, weren't these names, weren't our belongings, weren't our status, any of that. That we were truly the God within the body, and that we never die, and that these bodies are temporary suits that we wear until we decide to leave. And yes, that day will come where we have the opportunity to decide when we want to leave. We would know what fear is, okay? We would know that fear comes from ego mind insecurity. We know that fear is a thought only until we give it power to become more. The reason that many things aren't followed through with on this planet. Oh, yes, there's a lot of people in this country talking behind the scenes. That's how, that's how we became a country. But there's a missing element there. I'm sure everyone on this meditation knows. There's a lot of talking, a lot of talking, a lot of talking. It starts, has to start somewhere, right? But the people that are talking aren't doing anything. They're waiting. We would, we would have, we will too. This is, this is coming. But right now, we would, if we were in that understanding within us, ourselves, with our God heart, we would, None of this, none of these upheavals would be taking place. See, all of this that we are learning is not to empower you. It's to show you that you are the power. You open the floodgates to everything that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. Period. You have no limitations. We're talking about the God within you. There, you don't have any limitations. Why is there fear when... We, okay, so we leave the body. All right, we keep living. We, we don't die. And all along, all along, through all of these lifetimes, we already have been, will be, ever beyond and forever. Supreme, immortal, divine being. Sure, you know, when you fully discover this, through the heart mind. You'll still dip into the, the physical material world that we created for ourselves for entertainment and learning. But it, we know it won't it, we, we won't look at it <clears throat> excuse me as permanent. We won't look at it that way. We just say, hey, I'm gonna have fun with this while I'm while I'm in the body. Now, that can be superficial at first, where people begin to, it's a good start. People begin to embrace that understanding that they aren't the body, that there's a God within the body. You can take a thousand suns, compare them, compare them to our light, they look dim. Now imagine that. 
8 billion of us, for the most part, there's a small group of us that are aware, but the majority don't even know. They don't even have a clue as to how powerful they are. See, we as gods have always been free. We were created in freeness. We were never, ever created in bondage. Now, because of this planet being, for lack of a better word, invaded, We have been, it's funny, we've been in bondage, and, but yet we know we don't, there's no power that can bond us. But see that ego mind? That's the real kicker there. It will constantly convince us that you're in bondage. But, you, but you, then it will say, but you can be free. Most of our time is spent on this planet worrying, stressing, and fearing. Bottom line. That's an all ego mind. That's being mastered by the ego mind. Others of us, though, however, don't struggle stress and fear anywhere near the majority. And they're constantly becoming more and more enlightened to understand that eventually there'll be no ego mind, there'll be no worry, stress, fear, anxiety. There won't be any of that. It won't exist. Can you imagine yourself existing without any of those fears? That they didn't exist. And they never, you know, surfaced. You didn't have them. They were gone. You imagine if you surrender, when you choose to surrender, all of the crap that you've been dragging through lifetimes. And find this stuff's not surfacing any good. Why do I keep carrying it and worrying and stressing and fearing? It doesn't make any sense. So you get, you discover these things, not, not ridicule to yourself, but with kindness, gentleness, and humbleness, and gratitude, they say, I don't really care to do this anymore. I don't care to carry around 10 lifetimes ago something that happened in this life. It isn't fun. And I came here to enjoy myself. So through choosing to surrender and letting go, all of it, right? You let go of the body, you let go of the mind, you let go of the ego, you let go of all of it. Doesn't mean you lose it, it just means that you say, okay, I have this wonderful body that I'm going, that I'm in, that I want to enjoy this life. Those are my intentions. I want to discover the God that I am. You know, even for several million, even for several million, to know that is miraculous for the civilization planet, to know it, and to embrace it, and to embody it, and to go deeper within it. Because that's it. you're not going to ever be able to step backwards. And the more you stay there, guess what happens? The more you really like being there. And the more you like being there, the more you're going to stay there.
you'll begin finding yourself being drawn to things that are lighthearted, you know, uh, that are not vulgar and uh, disrespectful and totally turned upside down, like the moral codes, ethics, and everything of this society today on this planet. And how silly it is, how silly it is for the movie projector to keep going when the show is actually over. And, and people are still sitting there watching a show that has already ended. Isn't that interesting? The majority of us are watching a show that's already ended. Do you believe that these meditations are just happenstance? No, they're not by far. All the, these meditations day, every day for almost five years is now proliferated enough out there where more and more and more and more listen to them. These are... These meditations are threefold. They're putting seeds, unlocking locks, doors, windows, so that we begin more and more to go within. When you go within and you're, you're, you're you're quite firm on the understanding of why you've gone within, right? Then the people, those who are asleep, I mean dead bang asleep, no matter what you do, you're going to change their lives. Now, it's not like you're going to do something drastic, but them, them gravitating towards you will change their perspective. They'll want to know how to go within. And that's how the civilization and its completeness will eventually, everyone will evolve into higher frequencies. Rather, rather than doubt, stress, distrusting, relief. How many times in this life have any of us said to ourselves, man, you know what? It would really be nice if we had peace across the planet. Permanent. It'd be nice if everybody on the planet could just unbunch their shoulders, de stress. And not by drugs or uh, uh, any kind of elements that artificially try to do that, but never never succeed. Have you ever done that? Have you ever just said, "Wow, you know, this would be so great if all this all this crap." would be gone. And then you start understanding is that in order for it to be gone for me, I've chosen to go within, to discover the God that I am within this body because I am not this body. I never will be. It is a vessel for me to experience physical life. And you know, I'll have others if and when I choose to have others. There wouldn't be anybody Worrying, stressing, and fearing. 
Most people on this planet, they go to bed at night worrying, stressing, and fearing. They get up in the morning worry, stressing, and fearing. And they go throughout the day worry, stressing, and fearing. And none of them know that they're attracting the very thing that they don't care to have or experience. By constantly projecting out worry, stress, and fearing 24-7. And yes, even when the body rests. I'll join you in the meditation. I'll return to close this out.
take an easy and slow breath in through the nose and an easy and slow breath out of the mouth. Remain still. Bring your orphan parts home. Inside of you, inside of all of us, are neglected, abandoned, and unlovable orphans that do not have a home. For years, we have avoided these parts and told ourselves that we are okay when we honestly feel that we are not. Our job is to find and love these parts of ourselves who do not feel lovable. Reach inside and embrace these damaged parts of yourself. Show them how to feel loved. Don't expect anyone else to do this job better than you can. Open up your self-loving superpower and be with what you cannot be with. Face whatever sadness you are avoiding. Face whatever sadness you are avoiding and running away from today. Stop every outward action. Justify truly, just truly connect with you. Make time to really be with your heart and connect with innermost being. Did you have anything more self-loving, kind and healing planned for your day today? Take this with you for the rest of the day and to the evening and night the following morning. We will return here Tuesday. January 31st, 2023, 3.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our Global Guided Meditation Call. Be good to yourself, gentle, kind, loving, honest, and be in deep gratitude 24-7.